Yeah, okay. So I've got all these little scripts, scripts of paper. But I want to thank you for um, for praying for my family and so my family. We had COVID. And um, yeah, so I was really, um, I'm very thankful that you prayed because it really took effect on my body personally. So thank you for that. And even our 91 year old mother in law, she got it. And, she um, was like just an old, like an old steam engine. She got up every day and yeah, put the washing on and hung it out. <laughs> so she's a great witness. So, but anyway, thank you very much. And I want to thank Julie because she went through. Um, we went to a, a funeral the other day, and of Tobias, you know. And I just felt really strength. I never told Julie this, but I really felt strength in her being next to myself, you know. So it was just an atmosphere of faith and love. You know, to say goodbye to our brother and to come to the Lord. So, yeah, thanks for being here, Julie. Because really, we don't have enough time to. We should thank each other more. I think there's little things that they need to start. Does anybody heard of Dr. John um, Lake? He was actually a Protestant preacher in America. I just want to talk a little bit about what he did. He's not a doctor, but in one year he healed 20,000 people. And he just stood on the Word of God. And um, it's amazing. Now, he never experienced the charismatic grace. He came up from an incredible family of sickness and brothers and sisters dying. But he stood and pushed into the Word of God. And that's what really spoke. And a lot of this teaching is not my all. It's not my teaching at all to tell you the truth. It's actually came part from Dr. Um, John Lake, but also from, um, you might have heard of this guy, Curry Blake, who might have spoken of before. He had threw himself into the healing ministry. His daughter died at uh, three years old, and he really searched God for healing. And um, when his second daughter fell out of the uh, second story building, and when he was preaching, and she died, and he and he picked her up in his arms and took her up inside, and his wife came in screaming. He basically said to his wife, get out of here, you don't have faith. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will live, you will not die. And he prayed for about 20 minutes, put her on the floor, and all of a sudden, life came back into her. And from that, he started a whole beautiful teaching. It is very beautiful teaching on healing. And I just want to read to you what John, what John Blake says. He said, God does not have to decree that any human being be healed. He has already said it, and it is a fact. Now, it is up to us Christians to establish God's word on the earth by removing the enemy's works from the bodies of humans. And it's all got to do with, do you see sickness as an enemy of humanity? It's not God's, it's not God given. Do we see sickness in that way? It is up to us to enforce the defeat that God has already won over his enemy. We have to enforce it. God does not have to do anything to affect the healing of any person. He has already decreed it. And he says, which I won't go right into, but he, he says, you never pray for people to be healed. You command. You speak to that sickness. Did you hear that? We're yes. so good Catholics, we actually pray for healing. But he says, that's not the way to do it. We actually command. Very important. It's a bit of a shift in belief, a shift in the way that we think. I just want to go on to now some of the things that we can actually prevent healing. The phrase that, um, have you heard of 1 Corinthians, where are we? 2 Corinthians, sorry, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 20. It says, For all the promises of God are in him are. Yes. yes. Did you hear that? Again. For all the promises of God. In him, who is Christ, uh, are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. See, God wants to establish on earth, in this, through this community, the yes that is in the word of God. And it's so important that we step into that yes and enforce God's word into people's lives to say to this sickness, which is an enemy of human nature, get out in the powerful name of Jesus. Very, very important, my sisters and brothers. Many of us can use excuses, and one of the excuses we can use, it's a thorn in the flesh. 
Yeah, that yes. Paul uses it. Oh, this sickness is its form, falling in the flesh. Well, St. Paul was a bit of a scholar, but he never, he understood what that actually meant. And it wasn't to do with sickness. Please hear that. He never used it in dealing with sickness and diseases or casting out demons. In um, Numbers chapter 33, verse 35, they've just, Moses just taken off, he, he's just conquered. And the Lord God commands Aaron and Moses to divide the land up for all the people's inheritance. And all depending on the size of the family, you're going to get an inheritance. If you have a family of 16, I can you get a, big, uh, a bigger land. But then he says, I love this very first word in verse 55, but, you see, he's a whole blessing, and he says, but, if you do not drive out the inhabitants, in other words, if you're going to be disobedient, he wants the inhabitants to be driven out. He wants the sicknesses to be driven out. If you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those who you let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall be that I will do to you as I thought to do to them. Powerful word. We have the same thing saying in Australia. What do you think of Brian Welsh? He's a bit of a pain in the neck. <laughs> we, say, we say the same thing. Well, he's a bit of a pain in the butt. Is that true? No, you don't say that about me, but that's the language of Australians, isn't it? It's a thorn in the flesh. I can be a thorn in the flesh to many people out there. Oh, will you shut up with that preaching on the streets? You're a pain in the neck. And I'm meant to be a pain in the neck. Because you're not saved. See, civilization only has two ways to go, salvation or damnation. And I've come to realise that over the years. It's very narrow. It's salvation or damnation. I need to be a double-edged sword. People, that's harsh. Sorry, read the scriptures, look at the teachings of the Magnus Spirit of the church. Repent and believe it will be lost. Get baptised will be lost. It's very, very savage in many ways. I better get in Joshua... Chapter 23, verse 13. Know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations from before you, but they shall be a snare and traps to you, and scourges on your sides and thorns in your eyes. It's actually changed around. It's not only like a, a, a thorn in the side, but a thorn in the eye. Can you see it's talking about people, not about sickness? So we can't use excuses, oh yeah, this sickness is just a bit of a thorn in the flesh. No, it's not. It's not saying you're possessed. It's saying, well, let's deal with what the enemy has put on you. And he goes on to say, Curry Blake and John Lake, actually saying, if it doesn't get driven out, if it doesn't get healed, then you haven't commanded enough. You keep pushing in. Don't blame God for the healing has it come because it's up to you. He's decreed it. He's commanded you. So it falls back onto me. There's no condemnation in it. It's just that do I have the conviction in my heart that this sickness isn't from God? You know, Paul did leave Timothy at sick sometimes. But why was Timothy sick? Does anybody know? Basically, it was an exhaustion. He said, drink a little bit of wine. It's basically because he probably overworked himself. In other words, rest. We need to rest. We need to rest. Very, very important. So does everybody understand that, that one about the thorn in the flesh? Very important. Because that could be an excuse. As we, as ministers of God's word, everybody here, you receive freely, therefore we, we give freely. We minister healing. We enforce it into people's lives through the power of the word. And the word says, by your stripe you have been healed. And in 1 Peter says, by your stripes, basically means you already are healed. Step into it. So we need to enforce the stripes of Christ. Enforce the victory of Jesus Christ. And how many times do we command it as, and as much as we need to command it? 
Very important. Very important. Where am I here? Notes. Now I've got a lot of little notes here, that I won't go right into them. When Paul was converted, God told Ananias in chapter 9, verse 16 to 18, he, he told him that I myself will show him how much he has to suffer. And it wasn't to do with sickness. I have 15 scriptures here, just I won't read them all out, simply on Paul was rejected, Paul was attacked, Paul was stripped, Paul was shipwrecked, Paul was attacked by false brothers, constantly attacked by the mob, thrown out in stones. It was what he suffered, but it wasn't a thorn in the well that was a thorn in the flesh in sense because of the people. But it, it wasn't that the whole thing of sickness is not the thorn in the flesh. We have to address the issue and where it comes from. Very, very important. <coughs> We are with the whole era of generational persons. There's been a lot of teaching about that. These guys don't believe in that at all. And they take, just take one scripture. And they actually talk about India when they move into India. I said sometimes they come into whole Hindu areas. He said, how, how far do you have to go back in the generations there? He said, you have to go back thousands of years. He said, it's not what it's about. He said, you preach God's word and people are healed and delivered. At the cross, the power of the cross. At the power of the name of Jesus Christ. The precious blood cleanses. And how much knowledge do you have to have? Lord, was it this, this blind man, was it because of his mum and dad? And he said, he said, no, it's for the glory of God that's going to come through. In other words, the, the disciples were asking, was it his mum and dad's sin or was it, the, was it the sin of his granddad and his grandmother? And Jesus is going, no. You don't have to go back into that stuff. It's for the glory of God that he's going to be healed. Amen. Yes. Otherwise, you can study and study. I don't have enough lifetime to study how many verses there are. Because you know, there's so many books out there. So when I got to know these guys and what they were teaching, I thought it was absolutely brilliant because it was so simplified. He goes on to say, he said, never ask God to do what he has already done. Never ask God to do what he has asked you to do. Did you hear that? Never ask God to do what he's asked you to do. Lay your hands upon the sick and heal the sick. He's asked you to do it. And we, I think we have fallen into, don't get me wrong here, into a lovely Catholic system. Let's ask God. And God's going, I'm ask you to do it. Why? Because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the power of the name. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You, we are Christians. We are Christ, meaning we have been anointed. Amen? It's not taking anything away from the glory of God. It's actually saying, step in and do the same work that I have commanded you to do and leave this plus even greater work shall you do. We keep asking God to do something what he's already asked us to do. People ask me to go and do their gardens because I'm the gardener. I don't go and ask somebody else to do it. But as me work was on the garden. You have already been anointed for healing. There's nothing special about it. It's not what I'm the heal. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's simply saying, do the things that God has asked you to do. Feed the poor, yes. Buy a person of cold water, yes. Feed the poor on the street. Sit with the junkies, sit with the prostitute, yes. But give them the word of God. Even today at work, a Hindu boy said, well, what's, what's the good news for you? I said, oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> he got an evil. So I had an opportunity to tell him the whole thing of salvation, civilization is two ways, the way of salvation and damnation. Now tell you about the way of salvation. And can you tell me out of your 350 million gods, what God has died on the cross for you and risen from the dead, took your sin, shame and guilt, nailed it to the cross, rose from the dead, and now you have new life. And do you have a relationship with your 350 million gods? He goes, no. And you never will, because it's a lie. There's not that many. <laughs> you see, we come back to the very basics. Don't never ask God to do what he's asked you to do. And we need to reflect on that deeply because it means having a, a, a change of thought, a change of faith, saying God has asked me to be his ambassador. 
If Jesus said to me, Brian, you're my ambassador, I'd go say, well, I'll give it to David. <laughs> he can be the ambassador. No, you are his ambassador. If you've been baptised and you get confirmed, you are an ambassador for Christ. Especially with the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, for we have received the charismatic grace, the current of grace, we are ambassadors to liberate people. And we need to liberate people. And the big thing that I have to face, as you have to face, is fear. If we get a little bit louder than we should, because we get a little bit excited. See, I think we've been trading now. Don't get excited. Oh Lord, please heal this person. It's not what it's about. Gosh, the devil's sitting there going, yeah. He's just grinning at you. He's smiling at you. Why? Because there's no power in that. But if you become a commander, I've done that on the streets a few times. I've commanded people, shut up in the name of Jesus. And the guy sort of looked at me. That's terrible, isn't it? He's like, what? He was abusing me. I was like, shut up in the name of Jesus. Satan, come out of him. He just shook them all the way. You see, you need to know. Well, that's a bit overboard, isn't it? No, it's not. I'm an ambassador out there as the light of Christ. People get upset. You bet they get upset. I don't care if I get upset. I'd rather upset someone and see him go all the way to hell for all eternity. To face a little bit of embarrassment. See, Jesus never ever asked God, God to heal anybody. He commanded healing. Yes, he had a prayer for Lazarus. So that the Father, I want them to live. I want them to see. Be glorified. He knew what he was going to do. He wasn't saying, I oh, beg your Father, raise Lazarus. Lazarus, come out! He commanded. And then he says, I'm blind. And that's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do, to be commanders. Yes, it's going to raise our voice, because sometimes when we raise our voice, we get excited, don't we? I, got, I came up here on Sunday night to come, and Anne and I were praying, and I was impressed with the way they said, Break this cough over your life. Break it, you know. They were really commanding and commanding. Still a little bit there, but they were just commanding and commanding, you know. And I was like, yeah, this is it. That is, oh Lord, come for your servant Brian. Does nothing. We have been given authority by the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. He breathed on them. He's given us his Holy Spirit. And we need to step into that Holy Spirit. You are going to be criticised by our good Catholics. But embrace it. Embrace it. It's all a part of the cross. It's all a part of the cross of humiliation, of being misunderstood. Gosh, every Friday I get misunderstood. It's okay to get misunderstood. It's okay to get abused. It's okay because your identity isn't in what people say about you or think about you. Your identity is in you're a son and a daughter of the eternal Father, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is leadership. This is what leadership is about. Yeah. How good is he as a leader? And he's powerful. He's a child of God. Not how many, how many degrees we have. Degrees are very important. They get the wrong do you know? I guys, a guy rang me up today. He said, I'm really going through a struggle. You know, I'm giving up my business. You know, I've left Canberra. And then I said, bro, you need to know yourself. You need to know your identity. You're going through grief and loss, but you need to know. You need to press into Jesus. Don't come back to Canberra. It's a mess. Stay where you are. You need to know your identity in Christ. And if you know you're a child of God, you're working for your daddy who owes the universe. And he's blessed you, he's anointed you, he's called you by name, your name is written on the palm of his hand, he's filled you with your Holy Spirit to go out and just simply speak his word in everyday life. Amen? Amen. Very, very important. Thank you, Lord. All these little pieces of paper. And we worry about protection. Jesus has clothed us with his power. Very important, Luke 10, 9. Behold, I give you power. I give you authority. I give you power. I give you authority. You've got no, you got no idea how many Satanists out there, they curse me when I talk to them. I don't worry about it. 
Why? Because the power protects him. No curses will have harm me. Why? Because I'm covered in the blood. Do you believe that? Yes. Some, some people go, oh, you just curse me. You just curse me. You don't worry about the curses. Behold, I give you power, authority to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and over all the power, the ability, the cunningness, the craftiness, the seduction of the evil spirit. One of the gifts God gives me is that sometimes I just can't see what I'm walking into. <laughs> and it's true, sometimes I walk into places. But how did you get into there? What do you mean how they get into there? Did you see what was going on? I said, no, I saw somebody who wouldn't want me to talk to, so I just focused on that person. Might be into a prostitute pub, might be into a pub, might be just on the street. Quickly, all things going on. I said, oh, did you know Jesus wants to talk to you? He loves you. You see, sometimes it's a blessing if you can't see. You can't see. When I was in Papua New Guinea, I just couldn't see the danger and I just kept walking into it. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd be walking into tribal warfare. But anyway, I'll go back to God's willingness is always yes. God's willingness. When he said to the, to, to, to the person who had leprosy, if you want to, now we've heard this hundreds and hundreds of times, but I'm not quite sure how deep it goes. Lord, if you want to, if you desire to, if you long to, will you hear me? No, I don't. Get lost. He doesn't say that at all. He said, of course I want you. Be healed. You see, we don't have to have it all together to heal people. The main thing that you and I must have is a prayer life. Our relationship with the Father. Our relationship with Jesus. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Our relationship, who's your saints? You know, every day, every night we try to pray the rosary at home, that <coughs> my mum and all myself, I go, St. Teresa of Lisieux, pray for me. St. Teresa of Avilio, pray for us. St. Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. St. Don Bosco, pray for us. Um, Saint, not St. but Julian of Norwich, pray for us. St. Faustina, Jacinta, Lucia, pray for us. St. Dominic, pray for us. St. Alphonsus, pray for us. St. Bernard, we go on and on, the kids go, when are you going to stop that? <laughs> I have all these clown witnesses yeah. praying for us. Very important. That happens before I go out in the streets. When I'm out in the streets, I don't want to pray for people to be healed. I want to be a commander. Can you see the difference? I'm in the prayer room, and then I go out and I'll be a commander. What I've received in the prayer room, I go out and give. If God corrects me in the prayer room, then I go out and still give. Because He loves me, He corrects me. Very, very important. Something just come to my mind. I hope I can find that little bit again. Oh, I think I've already said this, but I'll say it again because it's come to my mind. The only hindrance to healing is that you believe there are hindrances to healing. <laughs> if you believe there's a curse involved, okay, you believe that, so let it be. That's what, you, that's what the scripture says. The only hindrances to healing is that you believe that there is a hindrance to healing. But if you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit has conquered every curse, Every demonic activity, every arrogance, the world, the flesh and the devil, Jesus has conquered all that on the cross. He's risen. He's not crucified again. He's lifted up high. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's poured out his Holy Spirit on them. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? It means stepping into what he's already decreed in your life and in my life. Go lay your hands upon the sick and heal them. He didn't say pray for them there. Go and lay your hands. Because if you're a prayerful person, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're going regular confession, if you're going regular Eucharist, two or three times a week, I okay, go try to get confession once a week in the ministry that I'm involved in, we need to be going deeper and deeper and being filled more and more. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Again, I just want to go back quickly. How much information did Jesus require to heal the sick? 
So we're walking in the footsteps of Jesus, amen? Amen. He didn't need much information. Yes, the woman at the well, words of knowledge. He used words of knowledge to reach into her heart. Very important. Matthew 9, 20-22. The woman gets healed because why? She touches him. She touches him. He didn't even touch her. <laughs> she touched him. Matthew 14. Crowds touch his garment. Why? Power was going out for him. This um, uh, curry break tells an interesting story. He walked in to a dress shop with his wife one day and um, he, he looked at this young girl and this young girl was going, Mummy, 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 I'm getting healed. And he realised there was power going out from him. He said, Mummy, mummy, I'm healed. Power was going out from him. He said, why? He said, because I said, Lord, let your power go through me. I'm an open vessel. I don't have to know. You do it. Is that beautiful? Yes. Do we have that type of faith? Many years ago, <clears throat> I read this Pentecostal story how he came out of the shop and he, had, he transfigured into Christ. And this lady saw him. And she ran up to him and said, excuse me, sir. She said, I just saw Jesus in you. You just transfigured. You had long white hair. You had long white beard. You had long down. He said, oh, that's nice. And he went out and said, well, why, why is this? He said, because well, sometimes I reveal myself to others and you don't even need to know. And I got jealous in my heart. <laughs> and I was praying with my mum one night and she was shocked. I said, what's the matter, mum? She said, Brian, you just had long white hair, a long white a white beard in her beard at the time and a long gown. Hello. <laughs> I was praying with these two little, two Aboriginal boys once in the room many, many years ago. And I prayed over one and he hit the deck, he fell down in the spirit. And I prayed over the other, I was gabbling away in tongues. The young one got a bit scared, you know, and the police came in and these guys just did a crime the night before, you know, and they arrested them, they had a lot of stuff stolen, they put it up the roof. <laughs> so I got there just in time. Don't worry, fellas, you, you'll get out this afternoon. And the police let them out. And I said, man, you know when you're praying in that funny language? I said, yeah, tongues. He said, you know what, what really freaked me? I said, what? He said, you had a long white hair, and you had a long white beard, and you had a long white gown on. The Lord has done it two, three times in my life. But I didn't know. Which I've just been convicted now. I should be praying, Lord, let your power flow out from me and heal others. And I don't have to know. Just be a vessel. Amen. Amen. Just be a broken tap. Yeah. That water keeps flowing. <laughs> and quite often the water, flo the water flows through the cracks in ourselves. Our brokenness. Just let it flow. For our woundedness, for our rejection. Tell me when time's up, please. Um, Keep going. You're on. Okay. So I'm going to pitch anyway. Some little notes here. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> yeah, so let's turn to Jesus to live our lives in the light of the Lamb constantly. Because if we walk constantly in Him, and we need to believe the Scriptures a lot, lot more, do you know you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? Wherever you go, Jesus goes. You're actually the temple. Your body is secondary to your soul. Please hear that. But God wants to heal the body is to win people to himself. We are temples. Wherever we walk, we release the power of God. I think um, Carmel said about the joy here earlier on. There's so many people quite often say to myself, he said, what do you want? I said, well, you're always smiling. <laughs> and quite often the employee agency, they want, the, a lot of the young fellows who work want to come back and work for me. I share my lunch with them. Some don't have lunch, so I'll share my lunch with them. One young fella texted me last night. Oh, actually, this morning said, See you on site at 7.40. He said, Yes, I heard all about you. First time we work, and I'm really looking forward to work with you. Because I share all God's word. I share my lunch. I share the love. I share, when I correct people, don't swear and abuse them like other bosses do. I said, Look, next time, try doing it this way. You've got a really good eye. I'll try to encourage you, and it pays off. And many have rang me up saying, can we come and work for you? I said, no, you can't. Or, I'm 
prepared to leave the employment agency so no, I can't, I can't do it that way because you're under contract. And I can't take you on until 12 months up. I said, I'm, I'm faithful to that contract. Otherwise, it makes me to be a liar. They go, wow, you're a really Christian, aren't you? <laughs> of course, I abide by the contract. You see, there's no cheating. There's no lies. I live the contract and that's a witness for Jesus. And then hearts open up for prayer. So the only hindrance to healing is that you believe there is a hindrance to healing. Examine your conscience. What do you believe is the hindrance to your healing and my healing? When I had COVID, I said, Jesus, I know you can heal me. He didn't, but he told me he did. But I said, the only, as I said, I think I shared with Anne the other night, the only prayer I could pray was simply, Lord, I offer in reparation for all the sins of the world. And it got worse. Lord, I keep offering. Lord, I keep offering for those priests who have apostatized and the cardinals who have apostatized. Those cardinals have set up gay communities and support. Lord, I offer. My headache got worse. <laughs> the Lord, I said, Lord, I offer it. I keep offering. And I fall asleep. <laughs> plenty. You see, it's the prayer of offering at times. He was using it. It was my intercession. Young prayer. I prayed a rosary. couldn't read the word, Lord. Offer. I offer it to you because I love you. And in reparation for all the sins committed against your most sacred heart, against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and for the conversion of priests, bishops, cardinals, Lord, I don't want any to be lost. And the same Pietro Pio said that Jesus, I want the whole world to be saved, Lord. And the Lord said, No. Because people don't want to be saved. Very sad. And you're here at the stigmata, so he was pleading. So I really encourage us don't use the excuse of the hindrances in our lives to pray for healing. But people aren't going to. We have to press in. We have to command that sickness to go. Don't use the excuse of, oh, it's a thorn in the flesh. That's to do with people. And you know yourself, people at work, they're, they're a pain in the neck. I'm just translating into the Aussie language, are you? <laughs> Who has pains in the neck? People you work with at work sometimes. <laughs> really? It's true. So I just really encourage us to open our wise, Pope John Paul II, open our hearts wide to Christ the world redeemer in a fresh way. We're coming up the Pentecost. Let's do a novena. Yes, for all that brilliant work that um, Peter Woods is doing in the leadership. Offer also intercession and the grace of the anointing of healing would flow through us. Not for ourselves. Just start praying the litany prayer of humility. That was, that was what I was getting proud of. But that will flow through us so people will be touched. They'll come back to the church and they'll come into the Eucharist and they'll be saved. Did you hear that? They'll be saved. I've met lots of people that aren't saved. Please hear that. I don't know their final destination on their deathbed. It's only God knows that. But when I talk to them, this person's just not saved. Andrew Barr isn't saved. We love him. God loves him. Some of the political leaders aren't saved. God loves them. And he wants them to make a decision for him. Very important. You might have to cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good to be voice. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so as we come into the area of praise and worship, let's ask the Lord to really convict our hearts that we are protected. Through the power of the anointing, yeah. and if we receive the blessed sacrament and precious blood a few times a week, or we believe it. Just believe it. There's so many weak Catholics walking around as they're defeated, absolutely defeated. They're not walking in the victory of Christ. Very important that we we've been anointed with truth. Amen. Amen. And if you really want to know that, like when Jesus said to Pilate, anybody is on the side of truth will listen to my voice. And don't believe the, the lies of the devil when coming through very good, good people. Or just follow your heart. The problem with heart that's sinful. Jesus didn't say, come and follow your heart. He said, come follow me. The heart is deceived, it's quite deceptive, the Bible tells us. And so we need to get into the Word of God, believe the Word of God, and stand on the Word of God, and enforce the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Very important. And I think we'll see the suburbs, the streets, will start to change. Everyone on my street knows me. 
Ready? White plus a dot dot. Yeah. Oi, bless you today. And there'll be a time when something will happen, so I'll come, I'll go into our house and ask for prayer. Yeah. We already have three or four people come to our house on Thursdays for a rosary from my street. So I'm reaching out just in the local area. Very important. But thank you, and Lord Holy Spirit, we just really pray that the little that I've prepared, the little that's been given, you take and multiply. And just really pray as leaders here tonight that we can really believe, get rid of the doubt, get rid of our false images that I'm not good enough or I'm not perfect enough or I'm not holy enough. Get rid of all that rubbish that the devil throws at us. And we just believe that we're children of light. We walk in the light of the land that bring healing to our nation because we are commanders in Christ's army. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.